You know, I've got to be honest here. When Apple announced the M3 Ultra instead of the expected M4 Ultra for the new Mac Studio, I'll confess that I was a little disappointed. And I don't think I was alone in feeling that way. Many of the early reviews of the M3 Ultra Mac Studio seemed a little negative. And I can understand why. With the M1 and M2 generations, the choice of whether you went for the Ultra was perhaps a bit more straightforward. Now you have to factor in a number of trade-offs. For example, single core performance is quite a bit better on the M4 generation cores compared to M3. If that impacts your workflow significantly, it's something that needs to be considered. It's similar when we come to graphics performance because the M4 generation GPU cores are quite a bit better than the M3 generation. Now sure, the Ultra has more cores, but since they're older and slower, the gap in graphics performance isn't as wide as in previous generations. I ran a poll to see which model you guys thought represented the best value, and 53% of you said the M4 Max with 16 CPU cores and 40 GPU cores. And I agree with that, it's a, an absolute beast of a chip. But only 8% of you chose the binned M3 Ultra with 28 CPU cores and 60 GPU cores. But that's the exact model that I've been testing here, and I've come to the conclusion that it's better than you may have been told. And the cost differential is not as large as you might expect. True, there are probably fewer use cases now where Ultra is the de facto more performant choice. For many creative and professional workflows, the M4 Max is plenty good enough, drawing close to the M3 Ultra or even surpassing it in some areas. It's probably true to say that the vast majority of users including me, would be better off choosing the M4 Max. And for many people, it's also probably true to say that if you're not already sure whether you need Ultra or not, you probably don't. But it's your money, and you should spend it however you want. And the step up to Ultra is not as costly as it might appear. Let me explain, and I'll be using UK pricing here, but I suspect the same principle is true in other regions. So Apple offers two off-the-shelf standard Mac Studio specifications. We've got the M4 Max model at uh, 2099 and an M3 Ultra model at 4199 pounds, basically double the price for the Ultra. Now, first of all, both of these chips are binned versions, which means they lose both CPU and GPU cores. The entry level M4 Max comes with only 512 gigs of SSD storage and it'll cost you another 200 pounds to push that to a more sensible one terabyte. And there's 36 gigabytes of unified memory, and only 36 gigabytes. You can't spec any more memory unless you also jump up to the more expensive non-binned M4 Max chip. So if you want, say, 48 gigabytes, that'll be another 500 pounds. The base M3 Ultra spec comes with a terabyte of storage as standard, and the memory is a rather healthy 96 gigabytes. It would be great if we could compare the two models by making the memory identical, but you can. Let's choose the one terabyte SSD, and then we'll select 64 gigs of unified memory on the M4 Max, and that puts the M4 Max Mac Studio at three grand. The next memory option is 128 gigs, so you can't have 96. And that upgrade will add another 800 to the price. So let's split the difference and say that if you could spec 96 gigs on the M4 Max, it would be 3,400. And that would mean that the jump from the M4 Max to the binned M3 Ultra is 800 pounds. Except it isn't. It could be much less. Let me explain. These two off-the-shelf models are the ones that will be stocked by retailers. Whereas if you specify anything different, it becomes a custom order. And the standard stock models are often available at a discount. Whereas with custom orders, that's not always the case. You can get them discounted, but it's more common to see the stock models discounted. And I've already seen these standard models available at discounts of up to 10%. So that brings the base M3 Ultra in our case down to £3,780. And that actually makes the binned M3 Ultra an interesting value proposition. Let's talk about the performance differences. Now, obviously, the M4 generation of chips has more powerful CPU and GPU cores, as we've said. Uh, it has a better neural engine and even slightly improved video encoder and decoder performance. The M3 Ultra might have the older cores, but it has more of them. 
and it has double the number of encoders and decoders for video. So when you have a workflow that can use those and the additional cores, it's going to win. Now starting with the CPU, let's take a look at single performance difference from M3 to M4 generation, because it's quite striking. In Geekbench 6, we see a 21% increase for M4 Max over M3 Ultra. For average day-to-day -day computing, you'd actually be hard pushed to tell the difference. It's a bit like saying one F1 car is a couple of seconds faster per lap than another F1 car. Now, if you only do one lap, they're both blindingly fast. But over the course of an entire Grand Prix, that's going to add up to a big difference. And it's the same principle here. If you have a repetitive workload that relies on single core performance, the M4 Max Mac Studio will be faster. And that's a trade-off that you now have to make if you choose the Ultra chip. Lots of reviewers have been comparing the multi-core performance using Geekbench as well, but here we're getting a strange result. This binned M3 Ultra scores 26,811 in my testing, and the full M4 Max is averaging around 25,600. Now that's an apparent step up of less than 5%. So you might ask, what's the point in the Ultra chip? But actually, it seems Geekbench's test isn't able to fully utilize the Ultra's cores, so this score is actually misleading. Let's instead run a Cinebench 2024 test. This is a pure CPU horsepower rendering test that sustains a load for at least 10 minutes. And I clocked this binned M3 Ultra at 2,671 points. The full M4 Max scores 2,089, so Ultra represents a 28% performance uplift. So the gains that you actually see in the real world will depend very much on the workflow. The M4 Max certainly delivers a lot of bang for the buck in comparison though. Let's move on and do a quick test of the graphics performance, sticking with Cinebench 2024. Here the binned M3 Ultra with its 60 GPU cores manages a very decent 17,770. Now how does that compare to the M4 Max with its 40 GPU cores? bearing in mind that those are newer and faster cores. The answer is that the binned M3 Ultra is only about 7% faster in this specific test. But what about the full M3 Ultra with 80 GPU cores? Well, that would be around 40 to 50% more performant than M4 Max with its 40 cores. So we're certainly not doubling performance and that full M3 Ultra chip is a whole bunch more money still. Now just for fun, I ran the same test on my PC workstation with an NVIDIA RTX 4090 GPU. And yes, when it comes to raw GPU compute, even the 80 core M3 Ultra isn't matching the level of NVIDIA's previous generation top consumer card. And that might lead you to believe that you'd be better spending your money on a PC with a high-end GPU. But as always, you can't make decisions on single benchmarks. Let's run Puget Bench for DaVinci Resolve. This benchmark tests a wide range of video editing tasks, rendering, transcoding, effects, and so on, with the CPU, the GPU, and the optimized encoders. My PC workstation with 128 gigs of RAM, a Threadripper Pro 3975WX, that's a 32 core CPU, and its RTX 4090 GPU, it managed a total score of 10,547. The binned M3 Ultra here comes in at 12,668. And even the full M4 Max scores 11,441. And these scores are borne out in my real world testing. The PC with the RTX 4090 is much better at any task involving GPU based effects. But for pretty much everything else in video editing, a Mac Studio seems to be a better choice. And again, this shows also that the M4 Max is a solid choice. But if you can get that discount on the binned M3 Ultra, it's probably worth the extra coin for these specific workloads. And heavy video editing is probably one type of workflow where the Ultra really is worth considering, even though the M4 Max is pretty brilliant in this area. Really, the main difference will be in final render times. Perhaps the main advantage of the M3 Ultra is the ability to spec up to four times as much memory as the M4 Max, 512 gigabytes. If you're interested in running large language models locally, that's a big deal. Remember, unified memory means the GPU can access all that memory, 
or at least most of it. There's no real equivalent for that from other GPU manufacturers. Now, sure, you could go for NVIDIA's H200 card, which comes equipped with a huge 141 gigabytes and a crazy 4.8 terabytes per second of bandwidth. But you'll need to be ready to part with 30 grand just for the card. But you could have three 512 gig equipped Mac Studios for that much money. Now, I'm no expert on AI and LLMs. If you want to see these machines being tested, I recommend checking out Alex Ziskin's channel for that. I'll put a link in the description, and I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Alex, and sorry if I didn't. To summarize though, if you've got a large language model which fits into the GPU memory, expect an Nvidia card to win, though the margin of victory may not be as much as you expect. And if the model overflows into system RAM on the PC, then the Mac Studio will be comfortably ahead. In fact, even when you manually split the workload on the Mac to make an equivalent test, it still outperforms the PC. And that's thanks to the efficiency of Apple's unified memory. Both the CPU and GPU can address the same memory space. So if you're working in video or 3D rendering and you want the maximum in performance, Ultra is worth a look. Likewise, if you have any workload that can be distributed effectively over many CPU cores, or if you need maximum graphics performance, or if your workflow needs more than 128 gigs of memory, then the M3 Ultra is the best that Apple offers for now. And the access point to the binned M3 Ultra Mac Studio is not the massive financial step up over the M4 Max that you might have thought, if you can take advantage of retailer discounts. For me, the M4 Max Mac Studio represents the best choice for the vast majority of users. The binned entry-level model can be found discounted too, and that's a lot of computer for the money. But I'd probably opt for the full M4 Max with 64 gigs of unified memory. Because once you push the M4 Max to 128 gigs, then the binned M3 Ultra starts to become a more compelling proposition. Yes, it's not quite the Ultra chip we hoped for, but I wonder if that's all part of Apple's commercial master plan. Now, they have said that not every generation of M chip will get an Ultra, um, but they're referring to the Ultra as we currently know it with the Ultra Fusion Interconnect. The name Ultra is just a product name and it could be slapped on anything or replaced with some other name. So don't be surprised if some sort of premium M4 chip appears in the Mac Pro in the not too distant future. In any case, the M3 Ultra is a fabulous chip for those who can take advantage of its unique features. And M4 Max is hardly a compromise for those who can't. I'm going to do some more testing with this machine. If there's something you particularly want to see, please comment below and I'll try and include some of those tests in future content. But until then, thanks as always for watching and supporting the channel. I'll see you again soon for some more geekery. <laughs>